for the Lord mm -hmm. for his greatness towards us, for the great love that he has exhibited toward us. Verse chapter 5, Paul says, God commended his love toward us in the hungry Christ died for us. It's a privilege uh, that we are in the house of the Lord. It's a privilege that we are engulfed in his mighty grace. It is a privilege that we are immersed in his boundless love. And we should not take these things for granted. We should love the Lord with our hearts, all our hearts, all our mind, all our soul and our strength. After all that he has done for us. We love you, Lord. Father, we come before your presence with singing. We come into your courts with praise. We are thankful unto you this morning that we bless your name. God, we realize that this grace in which we stand is all your work, not ours. We understand, Heavenly Father, that this love that you have given to us is boundless and is all encompassing. Thank you. We bless you today, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you will let the anointing be upon our hearts and our lives today. We pray that you will breathe on us, O breath of God. Fill us with life and you. We pray, Jesus, that you'll be with us today. Let the word go forth with clarity and power. Let it bring forth knowledge and understanding. Let it impart wisdom. God, cause it to be that some heart and some lives will be changed. All of your word. I pray, God, even for the sacraments today, that Jesus, upon receiving the sacraments, will become stronger, better Christian, more determined to please you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we are in the house of the Lord this morning once more, and uh, as you notice, we are going to be doing the sacraments. But before we do that, I'm going to invite one more time your first lady, my wife, Joan, to share a few words with us from the Word of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Today is a blessed day. It's a great day. It is a day, another day that the Lord has made and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it because if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we wouldn't be here this morning. But God has been good to us. And not only has he been good to us, but he has been always there by our side. Anytime we need him, he is there. He said we can call upon him in our trouble, in our distress, and he will be with us. And I want to say a great good morning to every one of you out there, and thanks to our pastor. Today is a special day for him also. And I want you to join with me out there, wherever you are, and wish him a happy birthday. I know we cannot be together today as we would like to, but wherever you are out there, just send him air hugs and air kisses and wish him a happy birthday. And also, we want to, I want to throw this out there. I know I might get in trouble for this later, but I want us to, today and for always, Something he did years ago that he never, never shared. But I want to address him this morning and say a great thank you for the, all the work that he has done. And I want to not only say thank you, Pastor, but also thank you, Reverend Dr. Lawrence Walden. Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> So God bless, God bless you, and yes, I did put it out there. You deserve it. You've worked hard, and 
We are here in the presence of the Lord and giving God praise and glory for this another day. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 <laughs> We're going to share the word of the Lord this morning with you. And it's, our text is taken from Matthew chapter 26, reading from verse 26 to 29. If you'll turn your Bibles to St. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 29. And it reads, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Our theme for this morning is Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. My mind goes back to the song which says, part of the song says, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow. See, one of the last things that Jesus did before his arrest was to have communion with his disciples, those who were closest to him, and he called him their, and he called him, called them his friends, not no longer servants, but friends. Then he walked out of the garden to pray, and then he was arrested. Note that Jesus knew that his time of death was near. It was his purpose in life. He knew that sitting down with his disciples to eat was the last time he was going to see them and see all of them together. And so he was prepared for the inevitable. What would you do in your last days if you knew when you were going to die? What would you do in your last days? Would you have a bucket list that you want to complete? Would you go skydiving to see how that feels or maybe tour the world? Maybe you will think of retiring, pay off for your house, and move to a nice sunny climate. Maybe you would visit family and friends, update your life insurance policy, or even bring your immediate family together for a reunion to spend time with them. Maybe you'll just update your will. But Jesus did not think along those lines. He knew his end was near, and he did not try to fulfill family obligations. Yes, family and friends were important to him, especially his mother and the disciple whom he loved. For while hanging on the cross, he turned to his mother and said, Woman, behold thy son. Then he turned to his disciple whom he loved and he said, Behold your mother. And this is found in St. John chapter 19, verse 25 through 27. His mother and, his continu and her continual care after he was gone was important to him. And so he wanted to leave John with the responsibility to continue to look after her. Jesus knew that his responsibility was his purpose and God's plan for his life. He also knew why he had come to earth. It was not to socialize or to see how many friends he could muster up. He had told his parents long ago, don't you know I must be about my father's business? My time is short and I have a lot to do in a short space of time. And we could understand that if we are in the same situation. Jesus knew that with the time he had left, he could not afford to be looking for somewhere to call his own in terms of a house. He had therefore said, at, 
a point in time in his life, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. So he would not leave this earthly home or his family of disciples to inherit anything, but he did leave a legacy. He did update his will and he promised them a home. Leaving a legacy is something we think about. A legacy is a gift of property, especially personal property. Example money, a bequest, anything handed down from the past. As human beings, we go through life and we work very hard. We think of our children. We sometimes might have a rough time. We experience trauma. We experience loss. We experience abandonment. But that's life. Man that is born of a woman is full of trouble. We wake up in the morning. We don't know what the day will bring. But we trust God and we know that he will get us through the day. He will take us through safe and secure in his arms. So because we might have had a rough life, we worked hard, or we experienced trauma loss and we have children, we still try to shelter them and protect them and keep them from experiencing what we have gone through. Hence, we use whatever human means we can to try to make a better life for them. For example, those around our age group, our age group that is, maybe we did not have a phone when we were growing up, didn't even know what a phone looked like. But the children of today, we make sure that they have a phone in their possession because we're concerned that while we are gone, they might have an emergency, they might have a need, and they need to get in contact with us. Maybe when we were growing up, we didn't have a television. But every child today has a, child, a television in their home, in their room. In any other case, you might have had only a high school education. And we seek to make sure that the kids that we have today have a college education. We might have had a rough life trying to make ends meet, trying to live paycheck to paycheck. And we so we want better for our family. We want better for our children. Again, that is what we believe is that having a college education is the way to go. And we believe that once we have a college education, we can make better money or more money. Sometimes that doesn't always work out, but we're not going to debate that today. We might have experienced trauma. Maybe it was physical abuse, mental abuse, domestic abu abuse, or abandonment. And we try to make sure our children are protected. And with all the best intentions, and circumstances that might present themselves, we try to make it better for them. So now because we want to leave behind a legacy, we try to make sure that we have a good life insurance in case of death. We try to make sure that we pay or prepay our funeral expenses. We make sure we have good health insurance. We make sure we pay off for our homes or at least make sure the payments are on time. In essence, we don't try to leave or want to try to leave a burden on our families in the event of our death. So we make sure that everything is in place in case of the unforeseen. We either make a will or we update the one that we already had. Jesus, he did the same. He updated his will. What is a will? Another name for will is a testament. It is a legal document that expresses a person or testator's wishes as to how their property or their estate is to be distributed after their death. And as with every person, you want an executor just to manage the property until its final distribution. Bear in mind that Christ came as a baby. He was unknown, yet he was a king. He had no earthly or biological father. 
but Joseph was his stepfather, as we would say. Yet he was the son of God. He had no property. Yet we are told in the word of God in Psalm 24 that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He had no sin, yet he became sin for us. He loved us so much that he sacrificed himself and died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed on him should not perish but have everlasting life. In dying, he was able to update his will. How did he do, how did he do that? What he did was remove or not focus on the old will or the old testament or the old covenant and its requirements, but what he did was install the new will, the new testament, the new covenant. I'm going to ask Pastor Reverend at this time to just explain just a little bit to us what is the difference between the old will or the old covenant and the new one because what we have to realize is that in the past we had to offer certain sacrifices but no longer do we have to do that mm -hmm. we have to do things differently now right pastor so the, the the old under the old covenant uh there were certain requirements made of uh individuals where they were required to bring either uh uh a bullock, a turtle dove, a he goat, a she goat, a red heifer, whatever the case may be, to atone for uh, their sins. And um, so basically, it, it depleted to a certain mention the people of their uh, economic resources. In that old covenant, uh, we find that the sheep or the object of sacrifice dies for the people. Jesus came and Jesus Christ, uh, so let's, let's say it was an overhaul of the old sacrificial system, where now instead of the sheep dying for the shepherd, we have the shepherd die for the sheep. And this sacrifice That's is true. now a once and for all sacrifice where once the sacrifice is given, no longer would a sacrifice uh, put a, 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 a hinge or a, how should I say that, um, put a strain on people's economic life because Jesus Christ, he became the sacrifice. Not only did he become the sacrifice, but he became the priest offering the sacrifice. So now the human, human element is completely removed. Amen. The human element is completely removed so that we can't say now that my sins are atoned for or I am forgiven because I brought such and such a sacrifice. We have, got, we have now got to learn that we are completely relying on Jesus Christ. The Bible says that um, without the death of the testator, a will is not enforced. So Jesus necessarily had to die. He had to die because it is upon his death that the will is enforced. And now that the will is enforced, you and I are now, according to the Apostle Peter, begotten again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So this new covenant come and it supersedes what existed in Judaism. We are no longer under Judaism. We are now under Christianity. We are now under grace. And the Apostle Paul says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so Jesus Christ, he ushered in for us and on our behalf a new dispensation, the dispensation of grace. In this dispensation, he, like I mentioned earlier, he became the sacrifice and he became the priest offering this sacrifice so that through his death, by his death, because of his death, now we are children of God and we have eternal life. Thank you, Pastor. So we know that there's an Old Testament and a New Testament. Testament means a covenant. The Old Testament was a foreshadowing of the new or a foundation of what was to come. The Old Testament pointed 
forward to a Messiah or Savior, and the New Testament describes the fulfillment of God's promise. So before Jesus came, he had nothing. All the sacrifices only lasted a short while, but on Calvary, Jesus paid it all. He made a new covenant, a new will, a new testament with us. We learn that the Old Testament had a requirement, the blood of animals, the sprinkling of that blood. Moses was the mediator in the Old Testament. The Old Will and or the Old Testament required the outward working of the law, which was hard to do. God promised the Israelites that they would be his chosen people and he would be their God. He issued 10 commandments and the laws of the Leviticus for them to follow. If they complied and followed, he would give them prosperity and protection. But you know what I learned is that altogether in the laws of, the Levit of in Leviticus, there were over 600 laws. Laws for males, laws for the females, laws under social laws, dietary laws, um, hygiene rules and regulations. People found this hard to obey. These rules and regulations would eventually re be broken. <clears throat> As human beings, we have a hard time obeying rules and regulations. And we always look for a loophole. Does this sound familiar? Look at today with this global pandemic. People want to have their own way. They want things to return to normal. They say they have, in, have had enough of this. Some refuse to obey the laws, the rules, and the guidelines because they think that they're stringent. Others think it does not apply to them. And so they put the lives of themselves and the lives of others in jeopardy. Laws were put in place for a reason, to bring order and not chaos. God is a God of order and not a God of confusion. And he knew that the system of animal sacrifice was only tempor temporary, although it lasted for many years. And so because of this, he loved us so much, he sent his son, his only son, Jesus Christ, into the world. This new covenant, this new will, this new testament would resolve the problem of sin once and for all. And that is why Jesus then had to update his will. He poured his blood out on Calvary. And I don't mean literally poured, but he died on Calvary, his life's blood poured out. He became the mediator between God and man. This new will or testament required the inward working of grace, Amen. as Pastor said, Amen. through Christ. For by grace we are saved through faith, and this is not from ourselves. As Pastor said, it's a gift of God. It is not by our works or by our achievements. For the old way was hard. Yeah. It was very difficult. It was difficult to maintain. Do you think today that we could maintain or keep the laws of the Old Testament? Today we have new policies and procedures, and they change every day. We find it hard to commit to them, to commit them to memory, let alone to obey them. We find it hard to obey what is set in front of us. And, but we try so that we can have peace of mind. But now we have grace offered to all. Grace does not mean that we can live our lives as we please and get no, away no, with it no. because we know that God will forgive us. It is like abusing our inheritance. Because we did not work hard for it, because we did not earn it, we abuse it. If a person abuses their inheritance, they can be read out of the will. Imagine you came from a prominent family and the testator dies. You attend the reading of the will and at the death you, ex you expect to inherit something, whether it's the estate, 
a part of the estate or whatever the case may be. You expect that because you know that you're either the son or the daughter mm -hmm. of the person that passed away. But when you hear all the names being called and your name is not being called, you wonder why. Why did I inherit? Maybe it's because of our behavior. Maybe because we abuse the privilege and abuse the power that came with it. Just like our earthly will, we have to meet certain requirements That's in right. order to inherit a share of this property. Right. We must be an heir. Today, we must be a close family member by blood or spouse or child of the testator. Under Christ's will, we are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We are friends of God. We have to accept him as the testator. Yeah. Note that if we want to ensure that we have possessions, we have to make sure we are the right people so that this inheritance can be distributed correctly. Estate planning is not just about distributing things after a person is dead. It is, after, it is the relationship that you have established in your life. For example, you might hold a picture of a family reunion day to your heart. You're not going to leave it to your next door neighbor. You're going to leave it to a person who holds that same fondness and dearness and keep your memory alive. So Jesus left a legacy. He updated his will, which includes many promises. And if you look in St. John chapter 14, it says that Jesus, like I said, did not only leave a legacy or update his will, but he left promises. Yeah. Promises such as he promised a place, Hallelujah. a home for us in heaven. Amen. This is bigger than the Amer American dream. Think of a mansion, streets of, of gold, pearly gates. This, you see, is what you can look forward to. This is what you call a gated community. And this is not free. You don't have, you can't live your life as you please and expect, and expect to inherit this either. No. But it is obtainable. Yes. Yeah. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. accept him, and you have a place Glory. in his kingdom. Glory. He promised us not only a place or home in heaven, but he promised us life, not just for today, Amen. but life for all eternity. Mm -hmm. Not the life we have that is full of disease, ailments, and pain, frustrations, death, and trauma, mm -hmm. and loneliness, but the life that is abundant, Hallelujah. full, and free. Amen. He promised us the Holy Spirit that would be our comforter. He would be our counselor, our helper, our intercessor, our advocate, Thank our you, strengthener. Jesus. He will teach us and help us to recall things, things that we need to recall to our remembrance. Mm -hmm. He also promised us his peace in a world of trouble, an uproar in a world where we are unsure if we're going to see or survive the next day. He promises us when we have questions about how we're going to pay our bills mm. or how we're going to send our child back to school or our mm. children back to school or how are we going to return back, or how are we going to return to work and a host of other questions. God's word says to us, says to us, peace. I leave with you mm -hmm. my own peace yes, I, give, I give to you I bequeath mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. not as the world gives do I give to you mm -hmm. he said do not let your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid hallelujah I've always read this particular scripture and I look at it as a as a singular um, section in that I'm thinking of do not let your heart be troubled and do not let it be afraid. But when I was reading this again, it says, if you look carefully, it says, do not let your hearts, plural, which includes all of us, neither let them be afraid. So all of us, our hearts, 
We get troubled. We are traumatized sometimes. But don't let it get us down. Amen. Neither let our hearts be afraid. Hallelujah. He said, um, neither let this be afraid. You see, our heart can be traumatized. Our lives can be traumatized. We can be anxious. But the word of God says, be anxious for nothing. But commit our way unto the Lord. And he will hear us and he will listen to us. I know it is not easy to stand on, God promise, on God's promises, but remember his promises will never fail. Amen. The Amplified Bible states, stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Trust me, I won't let you down. So where does this leave us? It leaves us with the New Testament covenant. Jesus here uses his blood to sign or as a sign to give formal consent to a new contract, which is now poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus, he paid it all. Yes. No longer do we have to live in the old way, for we are made in the newness of Christ. The sacrifice was made once, and for all, Hallelujah. we have a hope, an even Thank greater God. hope, Thank because God. Jesus did not die, but he rose again, and he came back for, to come back for his own. Thank you, Jesus. He left a legacy. We no longer have to do the hard work to uphold the stringent laws. He did it all. He Hallelujah. updated his will Thank to you. include us all, not just the Jews, but the Gentiles and the Christians too. We are now heirs and joint heirs Thank with you. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And he causes us to inherit his precious promises. Imagine a mansion, a home we can call our own. Yes. This is not a rent to own property. Mm -mm. There are no eviction notices. No, not there are no mortgages to be paid. No renters or homeowners insurance. Mm. We can sing like Jean Johnson. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop mm. in that bright land where oh, we'll never yes. grow oh, old. Yes. And someday yonder, we'll never more wander, but walk on streets that are purest gold. Mm. Isn't this something to look forward to? A legacy to be Thank included you, to in his will, to have a promise of a home, an eternal life. I can live with that. To know that no longer will I have to struggle Hallelujah. in the future. No longer will I have to get up in the morning and wonder which bones are going to creak, crack, or give out <laughs> from under me. No longer will I have to wonder if I'm going to get through an 8 or 12 hour shift. No longer will I have to wonder about Thank my you, future Thank because you. it is all in the hands of the God Praise who we serve. God. He God. can handle it Amen. all. Knowing all of this makes me know that my future is brighter Amen. because he paid it all. Hallelujah. God bless you. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, what a word. What a bless word. The Lord. What a word Thank we you, have Jesus. this morning. Amen. Glory. Now, after all this that Jesus has done for us, how can we not love Jesus? The Amen. old songwriter says, Oh, how I love Jesus. He first. The other song says, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters he lifted me, now safe. Um, it was love. I lift. Thank you for the It was spoken. God bless you. Beloved, wherever you are this morning, please be assured that God loves you with an everlasting love. Amen. And that regardless of what happens around you, God's love for you has never changed. It's never, ever going to change. You have an eternal lover in Jesus Amen. Christ, our Lord. I would like to, at this time, invite you to partake at the Lord's table with us.
And as we get ready to partake of the sacraments, I want you to be aware that regardless of your station in life, Amen. regardless of how you feel about yourself, and regardless of how others feel about you, there is always a place at God's table for you. There is always a place at God's table. You may have done the most heinous sin that you could imagine. There is a place at God's table. And for those of you who feel that you're the righteous one and that your life is perfectly righteous and holy before God, there is a place at God's table for you too. In fact, I, 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 would, I would dare say that you might want to occupy the place of repentance because the Bible says there are none, no, none that's righteous. No, not one. So I want you to understand, as we partake of these sacraments, as we get together at the Lord's table, there is a place at God's table for you. For some, it may be a place of renewal, where you find that your love for Christ is not what it, what it usually is, that your surrender, your commitment to Christ is not what it usually is. It's a place of renewal. It is a place for some of restoration. It is a place for some of repentance. For some, it's reunion. For others, it is surrender. And yet for others, it is commitment. But there is a place Amen. at God's table for God. every last one of you. The Apostle Paul says that we should examine ourselves. Let a man examine himself. So I want to invite you right where you are this morning to examine yourself. You. Did you find that you have fallen short of the glory of God? Did you find that your life is not what it is supposed to be? It's not what it's meant to be. Did you find that the life that you have or that you are now living is really not the life that God requires of you? Do you find that you do not love God as fervently as you used to love God? Do you find that you have become lax in your desire to serve God? That there is not the, that fervency that once defined your Christianity. You find that it is so this morning? Then there is a place at God's table for you this morning. So wherever you are, whoever you are, God is calling to you this morning. From home, my child. I am still your father. You may have been rebellious or you may be rebellious, but you are still my child. You may have backslidden, but you are my child. You may have completely turned your back upon God and walked away, but you are still God's child. Nothing that you do will reverse the fact that you are God's child child he loves you with an everlasting love and he always will love you when he died as Joan just spoke everything we could ever imagine was enveloped in every single ruby red bead of blood that ran down his face his hands his side and his feet dropping onto the rocks of Galgotha Everything that you need was paid for. Amen. It was bought with the blood of Christ. John Starnes says it this way. See my Jesus on the cross. The
sin died. Where the blood fell. I'm so glad his precious blood covered me. And this morning from the message that we received, we should get this. That every sin that we have committed is atoned for with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. His blood, says the writer, cleanses us. Also. As we draw closer to the Lord's table, just bear in mind that the whole design of the sacrament is that we should always remember Jesus Christ in all that we do. That he should be the Lord of our lives wherever we go. That everything that we could possibly need and desire, everything we should ever hope to be, is wrapped up in this, his broken body and his shed blood. The Bible says, I received of the Lord Jesus Christ, that which also I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. He blessed it, he broke it, he gave to them. and said, take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. Then he said, take, eat. I take the bread. Thank you, Lord, for your broken body. Oh, God, we walk in the strength of this, your broken body, not by our own strength. The strength of your broken body. Of ourselves, we give to you. In fact, we give all of ourselves to you today. That God walking, we walk no longer as ourselves but that we are true reflections representatives of Jesus the Christ Amen. after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying this is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for many for the remission of sins and then he commanded his disciples all of you drink from it you may take I love the new songs we sing today, but I love some of the old songs. Songs like, Oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes whiter than snow. I love songs like, There is power in the blood. But I really, really, really love this song. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from, from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged. Listen, it didn't prescribe a specific sinner. Why? Because the blood of Jesus Christ, his forgiveness is general. We read John 3.16 that whosoever Believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He says, the writer says that sinners plunge beneath that flood and lose all their guilty stains. If you want to be free of your sins, just have yourself plunge or just plunge yourself under the blood of Jesus Christ. It doesn't Amen. take much. All it takes is that we acknowledge that we have sinned. We come before God and invite him to forgive us of our sins. And then we turn and we walk away from it. And we will indeed lose all our guilty stain. Father, we thank you today for your broken body and your shed blood. 
God, we by faith look back at Golgotha. Saw when the blood drained down your blessed visage. Pounded upon the rocks at Golgotha. And by faith we hear the blood drops beating the tomb. Of justification. Sanctification. Regeneration. God, we thank you for the gift of the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, we thank you for the gift of Christ. And Jesus, we thank you for the gift of your blood. It is in your blood, God, that we find redemption. It is through your blood that we are made new. It is through your blood that we are begotten again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Today, God, we join with the writer. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence, I will daily live. Oh God, what an awesome God you are. Jesus, we surrender to you now, God. We give ourselves to you and we ask you to live through us, oh God Almighty. Lord, we surrender. God, when all that we know and have is stripped away, what we have really is just you. So we give ourselves to you. Use us for your glory, O oh God. May we constantly, day by day, be renewed as we look to you. Father, hear and bless us now, we pray. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you, dear brothers and sisters, friends. God bless you. Today we rejoice in the God of our salvation. May his peace be with you. Till we meet again. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you Wednesday evening for our Bible study. We just started a new series, uh, Challenges Facing the Church. We invite you to join in on us. You can find us at uh, Change Make on YouTube Live at Change Makers Charismatic Fellowship. Change Makers Charismatic Fellowship, or you can join us on Facebook Live at Lawrence Walden. It's at 6 o'clock on Wednesday evening. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you. Be blessed. Have a very prosperous week in the Lord. Amen.